So, uh, welcome to this schematic guide on crucibles. Uh, a lot of math. I love math. But, um, yeah, I spent like a fucking hour on this little piece of code. Um, what does it do? Um, it gives me the flow rate of anything coming into the core. But, but Dan, Dan, you might ask. Can't you just hover your mouse over the conveyor and find that same number? Yeah, I guess you can find a similar number. It's not really the correct number because it's going to flip. 35, 30, 35, 25, 15. I don't know what the actual flow rate, and that's super fucking annoying. But I spent an hour, and I made this guy. So the actual flow rate okay, is 27. And then this thing turns green when the... Um, and the whatchamacallit, when the tolerance is like less than 0.3. Anyway, um, cool. Flow rate of this dude right here is 27 items per second. Cool. Um, so when I started building my crucible, before I even got started, I went through a bunch of math. So I literally went through every block it takes to make the silicone crucible for a, like a drop and go, or like a set it and forget it. So like, Put the crucible down, put the schematic on sand. Good. Uh, so I went through each one of those blocks. So like this one, input, four coal, six sand, one pyrotite, and output silicon at 1.5 seconds for production time. I put all of that stuff into this dude. So again, coal an input. I didn't have to put that actually. Cold coal, great. Material, it's a negative because it's consuming the duration and then the material per second. So this is a negative 2.67 material per second uh, block that has to go in or out of it. So I took all these numbers and I put it into this dude. So this dude, it goes line by line and then the top row adds everything up. So because these are all zeros, they don't really count right now, but silicone crucible, we can see all together, it consumes 0.67 pyrotite, uh, four sand, and 2.67 coal per second. And it gives me 5.33. Oh, I can probably, on the big ones, I can probably figure some cool stuff out. Anyway, so at four of these, let's take a look at four. Uh, four on a good day if I am not doing a overdrive projector. So let's get rid of these. If I'm not doing an overdrive projector, I should get 21.32 uh, from my silicone crucibles. And let's let that run. That's going to turn green once it's like not changing numbers anymore. Um... Yeah. Oh, so I went through this thing and I was like, oh, what is the minimum number of blocks that I need in order to get like a perfectly functioning, fully efficient love efficiency, fully efficient silicon crucible setup. So I started with two silicon crucibles and then I went to the pyrotite mixer. So for two silicon crucibles, does one work? No, pyrotite's in still red. Does two work? Yes, two is the minimum number of pyrotype mixtures you need for the silicone crucible. And then I went to the coal. Uh, so for the coal, I can just change the number. Does one work? Uh, no. Does two work? And then I already know you gotta double it. Four. So four puts us in the positive, so we're making more coal than we need for the system. But if I go down to three, no, it doesn't work. Four oil press so i now i'm in negative in oil um because these coal centrifuges are eating up oil so i can do one that doesn't work i still have a negative and i can do two now i'm positive in oil so that's taken care of and then air blast drill so this is just an air blast drill it's an air blast drill with a water uh, with a boost so we can see we're negative in sand 
We have 13 negative sand. Does one air blast drill do it? No. Is it two? Yes. And then the last one you get to water, and I think this one's nine. Let's see. Nine. This is in the positive up here for water. Does eight make us okay? Seven make us okay? Six? Five? Four? No, it's five. Um, so, and then lead, I'm not really counting, uh, because that gets fed in by, um, uh, outside. So in order to have the most efficient, uh, schematic for a two silicone schematic, two silicone crucible schematic, I would need two pyrotype mixers, four full centrifuges, two oil presses, two air blast drills, and five water extractors. Sweet. Um... Let's take a look at a real world example. So we're gonna throw this guy in. Oh, no, no, where's the really crappy one? Uh, I guess we can do that. Yeah, we'll do this one, all right. Uh, so this setup has four silicone crucibles. It has four pyrotype mixers. Uh, let's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Eight cold centrifuges. Got four oil presses. Got two air blast drills. Have one, two, six, seven, eight. Eight water extract. So if I take a look at this, this setup is totally not efficient. Um, it's always going to be low on sand, which means it's not always going to be making the most silicone it possibly can be. If we take a look at this, we can see that the number for the sand is pretty low. It's not overfilled and drops every once in a while, especially because the pyrotites can eat it up. Eh, it doesn't look that bad. Um, and of course I'm ignoring the whole idea of like overdrive projectors because if you're multiplying the production of everything by the same value, it makes everything still even. So let's just put those guys back, those guys back in there. I think when I had the overdrive projectors is when it really showed the not having enough sand to run this whole thing. Anyway, um, this is a crappy schematic doesn't have enough efficiency, doesn't have enough materials. Uh, this one is actually a little bit better, or a lot better, it's actually evened out perfectly. So this one is four, pyrotite four, cool centrifuges, four, no, one, two, eight, eight. Oil press, this is four, air blast drills is three, and then water is, let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So this one here is perfectly balanced. Let's see who made this. This is made by Silicon Crucible, scanned by Intervection. If you're gonna steal this schematic like everyone, okay, cool. Um, it's good, he figured out the right numbers to get this guy going perfectly. And let's take a look at mine. Mine's actually not perfectly balanced. I got more stuff than I need, kind of way more stuff. But let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to make this full screen now. So this is the schematic that I came up with. Um, for all that it takes, the four silicone crucibles, it's roughly the same size, but I feel like it's a lot easier to use, which is why I used this one. Um, for this guy, you have to feed in the lead on the side, and then kind of like, guys, this feels messy. I don't like messy things. It's messy as fuck. Look at all this. All these, like, conveyors and shit. I don't like it. I do not like it. Look at this. Like, not that many conveyors. Nice, neat, and orderly. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this guy. Um... Let's reset this. We're gonna see theirs compared to ours in a minute. All right, 
Um, to make this, you're actually only going to make single half at a time and then everything just kind of repeats itself or reflects on itself. Oh, and for this, the lead goes in through the top. You know how much lead you have, you know you're never efficient, it's easy to make a line. Uh, when I'm making this schematic, I usually just double it back to back. I wonder if that thing's gonna... Yeah, it did not like having that there. Anyway, um, I usually put them back to back so I can use the same as medium conveyor line for the lead. It works out really well. Um, all right, let's make this. So like I said before, you're really only making half of this, reflecting it and then doubling it. So this is like the core thing of it. And I know this looks complicated. It's really not. We can do it really quick. Um, and I try to have as many things touching. I don't like having things running around if at all possible. Uh, so we have an air blast drill, connecting it we have the oil extractor. The oil extractor needs a whole ton of water. And then we have one more water here, and then we have a liquid junction router to give that little bit of extra water to the air blast drill. The air blast drill actually doesn't need all the sand. Um, we're in positive and sand for my schematic, so it's okay if it runs a little low, but it evens out anyway. Anyway, anyway. Um, then we are going to grab a unloader for lead and we're going to just jump over first water. Um, from here, this is an overdrive projector. I usually just throw a battery right in here. And then this microprocessor, watch my video on how to get a unit bind and flag and there's a bunch of shit in here. Don't worry about it. Um, but basically, this is a mono that fills that projector with 10 phase fabric. Easy. So I just have that in there. So whenever we get phase fabric, he just starts filling up. All right. Uh, I get another bridge. And that way, the lead is feeding into the pyrotype mixer. Um, I have a silicone crucible, so the silicone crucible is getting that um, pyrotype. And then I have two junctions, so the sand from here is going right into the crucible. Uh, then I have a full centrifuge, and I have another one down here. And then I just put a little conveyor pointing in so that the coal from here drops down and goes into the crucible. And then because it can't, oh, and then it also feeds uh, the pyrotype mixer, which is perfect. Um, just to fill space, I put a little battery in there, it doesn't matter. I grab the oil from up top and I bring it down. And because we're going to be reflecting this, put a router here and put a router right here. And then the rest of the stuff is kind of like whatever fill. I'll just put a, whatchamacallit. Power node in there, put a power node at top. Two more batteries just to fill it up. And then my little note. Guys, if you copy this, if you make this schematic, yeah, beautiful. Do it. I love it. You gotta put a little, little tiny note in there. It's like, I love Bunny Builder. Anything, especially if you play an Adner. If you play an Adner, you're using this build, this schematic, you gotta put a note in there. A little message block. Something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, from here, Super easy. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to reflect it with that center overlapping. Easy. And that's basically it. From there, you got that done. You don't need that first one. You copy this again and you tessellate it. As long as you have the plasmidium conveyor coming in with the lead on the top, which is really easy to see, this thing's going to work. Let's go here. And let's see, so this inefficient one by my standards is running at 26 per second. And let's see what mine runs at. Reset this. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 that's it. Perfect, beautiful. All right, let's see what this goes at. So crappy one was 27. And this one's all the way up at, I'm going to say 31, maybe 32 per second. I feel like this is a lot better. 
Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, leave a like, comment, something. I don't really know how this stuff works. Do, do, do something. It's great. Yeah.